Welcome to another video. The horizontal asymptote of a rational function is actually the limit of the function as x approaches infinity, either to the right or to the left. So whenever you're asked to find the horizontal asymptote of a rational function, you need to compute two limits one going to infinity, the other to negative infinity. And those are the two things we're going to compute in this video. But I just want to draw your attention to something that usually causes trouble for students. It is the square root sign. So, whenever you have a square root sign, it causes a lot of trouble for students. And let's address that. I know I've done about two or three videos addressing this issue, but I think while I was preparing for this video, I figured out a much nicer way. Whatever happens, whether the square root sign is under or the square root sign is on top, you can always solve it. Let's get into the video. So let's find the first horizontal asymptote and we're going to go the easy way. The easy way is the positive infinity way. We're going to say that the limit as x goes to infinity of this function, um, 1. So what should we do first? Is the horizontal, okay, let's just write the problem. 1 minus x over the square root of 4x squared plus 3x. You know what? I'm beginning to love this new um, method that I just um, thought about because it's going to save you from all the confusions that would come in. Just do what I'm going to show you. So right now, I know that generally when I'm dealing with a rational function and x is approaching infinity, x, come on, why do you look like infinity too? Okay, that's a better x. No, there's no better x. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, let's focus. So, x goes to infinity. Now, what do you have here? This, the, you usually focus on the denominator looking for the highest, the x with the highest power. So, the x with the highest power we have is x squared, but we know it's not really x squared, it's actually x, because when you take the square root of x squared, you get x, but you don't really get x. Remember, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Now, it is that confusion that I want to address in this video. What you should do, if this sign is square root sign, take out x squared from the denominator. And how do you do that? You just factor out x squared. So we can write this to be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of the top is going to be 1 minus x. Now, the denominator, I want you to go under the square root sign and do this. Take out x squared from here. Write it as x squared times 4. Okay, you factor off x squared from here. If you factor out x squared from here, you're going to be left with 3 over x. Do this. Now, you see this is a product because this, we can now write this to be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity. The top is still 1 minus x, but now the bottom is a product of two terms. You can now separate them. The square root of x squared and this one is going to be times the square root of 4 plus 3 over x. Now, this you can write to be the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 minus x over what is the square root of x squared? You remember? It is the absolute value of x. So it's going to be the absolute value of x. And then you still have this guy here, 4 plus 3 over x. Right? Good. Now, we need to make a decision about this guy. Is this guy positive or negative? Think about it. 
X is approaching positive infinity. So this, it is impossible for X to be negative. X has to be a positive number because we're far in our journey to positive infinity. So this guy has got to be a positive number so you can as well remove the absolute value bars and just leave it, okay? So this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 minus x over x times the square root of 4 plus 3 over x. So now this x, we can actually move it up. You should move it up, actually. You can move this x up here so that it becomes 1 over x minus x over x. That's actually the, the trick. So this is the limit. Or just divide every term on top and bottom by x. That means this x is gone. And you divide this by x, divide this by x, divide this also by x. So what you have is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x minus x over x divided by this term in the bottom also by x. x times the square root of 4 plus 3 over x, also divided by x. Guess what you have? What you have now is the limit as x goes to infinity of, this is 1 over x minus 1, divided by, this x cancels this x. What you have left is just the square root of 4 plus 3 over x. And we can now take the limit. If you take this limit as x goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0. This is a constant, so you have your minus 1 sitting there. And in the denominator, this is going to go to 0. What you have left is just 4 here, so you have the square root of 4. So you see, your answer is negative 1 half. This is the horizontal asymptote as x goes to positive infinity. Now we need to investigate when it goes to negative infinity. And guess what? It's the same calculation we're going to do. The only time we need to make a decision is when we get here. You know how I was saying that the, in, the, the, the limit goes to positive infinity and, and therefore this must be positive. When you get here in making this decision, this x is not going to be positive. It's going to be a negative x and it's just going to affect your final answer because that negative will change this to a positive. That's the only difference between positive infinity and negative infinity when you take the limits of rational functions that look this way. Be careful. It has to be a square root and it has to be this has to be odd. If this was an x squared, it doesn't matter. Remember, if what we factored out, the absolute value was another x squared, it doesn't matter. This will never, if it was x squared, it will not be negative, even if you're going to negative infinity. So watch out for things like that, because it might become very tricky. Okay, let's, um, well, we know that it's gonna be negative infinity. I'm just going to change the sign here to negative infinity for the second part, and we just finish it up. I'm not going to erase anything. I'm just going to adjust them. Let me just do it while you're watching. So, so this is, this, okay. So we could say that um, as x goes to infinity, f of x approaches negative 1 over 2. So let's do the second part. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches what? Well, Let's, let's do all the, the adjustments. Everything else is okay. It's just that I have to change this now to negative infinity. I have to change this, negative infinity. I have to change this to negative infinity. You see, nothing is changing, but when making this decision, the absolute value of x is negative infinity. Come on. <laughs> the absolute value of x here is gonna, has got to be negative, okay? So it's negative x. Negative infinity, and this is negative x, okay? Let me put in parenthesis. So here, this is still negative x, and we can actually pull the negative to the back. Huh. Okay? And the same thing here, x goes to negative infinity, but now this is now negative and this is positive. 
after you divide, after you put this negative in effect. So what do we have? It's going to be positive, and this is going to be positive. Okay, goes to positive one half. Hope you learned something. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.